Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Andrea Berry, and I am I Do Wear's Director of Partnerships and Learning. And I'm excited to be here today talking to you about measuring your mission. Specifically, we're going to be talking about kind of those introductory stages as to how we can use data to really effectively track organizational health, and then from organizational health, starting to get to the point where we're going to track organizational success. And really, those two things are somewhat different, and we're going to explore how they're different and what kind of a practical step-by-step -step approach might be for you to get started. Looking at all that data that feels really overwhelming and turning it into something that can be practically used for your organization, and probably in small steps or small increments. So uh, quickly before I get going, a little bit about myself. Again, I'm Idealware's Director of Partnerships and Learning. Idealware is a nonprofit organization ourselves based up in Portland, Maine, whose mission is to help other nonprofits make smart software decisions. You can think about us as a true technology capacity builder for the nonprofit sector. We are a research organization. We dive deep into all different areas of nonprofit tech, everything from accounting systems to databases to social media. And we take our knowledge and deep research into those different topics and we package it into what we hope are easy to understand, easy to digest, yet useful and not dumbed down pieces of information for you to take, hit the ground, and run with. So I'm excited to be talking to you today. Uh, I come from a fundraising, as well as a, a bit of a teaching back, to take what we are good at for our organization and to, number one, figure out how do we actually prove that we're good at it, and then what is it that we're really good at and what's actually coming of the work that we're doing. So I want to kind of start with this concept that, uh, you know, we need to figure out, and I'm going to read this quote, um, so what kind of data do we need to be measuring to show how effective we are in having an impact on the folks that we serve? That's really the point, right? So there's lots and lots of data that we can collect. It's going to tell us a number of different things about our organization, but the bottom line is, what kind of impact are we having? What is coming out here? Rem and Sean talked about the social impact. That's really the bottom line, but there's lots, you know, there's that dot, dot, dot. There's lots of things in between data <laughs> and social impact. So it's important for us to not get terrified of social impact on one end because we can't seem to see through the you know, yada, yada, yada that goes in between these numbers that we could theoretically collect and this final outcome of social impact. Now, Idealware is currently involved in a year-long uh, study into how nonprofits are using data in partnership with N10. Uh, this information today is the beginnings of some of that data and the reporting, however, not all of it. Check back with us in the middle of October, <laughs> and then check back with us in the end of the year, and there'll be multiple reports coming out from this data research. But from the uh, 500 nonprofits that we talked to in a survey, as well as uh, I think we talked to about 20 different nonprofits in intense focus groups, and we're now starting a um, case study phase, all of that information has been gathered together to help you figure out how in the world do we fill that dot, dot, dot? So the concept is you've got lots of data. There is lots of different types of swirling data out there. There's fundraising data, outreach, communications data, finance data, programmatic data. There's lots of stuff that's coming at you or that you could potentially have directed towards you, but it's your responsibility to figure out what to do with that. So that data is essential to assessing your progress. But we need to remember that <laughs> it's not always clear how to get from here to there. So data can definitely be helpful in providing this kind of clear understanding of our organization overall, and then guiding our actions. So helping us to make what well, you know the, the buzzword in the nonprofit tech world is data-driven decisions. And we're trying to push everybody to data-driven decisions. Well, how do we actually get there? How? How in the world? I mean, it gives us a headache. It makes us feel overwhelmed. It makes us feel like we can't possibly get from what we've got, from a few spreadsheets, from what we need to report to our foundations, to something that's actually practical. And that's what we're going to talk about today. 
data for decision making. So first of all, I want to be really clear what we are and aren't talking about today. So we are not talking about how to collect the data that funders ask for. Because yes, that's important. That's important for the bottom line. That's important for that money continuing to come in. However, that's not always important for assessing organizational success. We would love it to be. As Ram and Sean mentioned, you know, ideally there would be this partnership, there would be this collaboration. Uh, the reality is that that's not always true. And so what we're gonna talk about today is much more how we gather data, data <laughs> to be a better organization. So what data are we talking about? There are lots of different kinds of data. There's organizational health metrics, program health metrics, and mission success metrics. These are three different types of metrics, and this is coming directly from all the information that we're collecting, that for organizations, it is extremely helpful for you to divide your metrics and your data collection into these three different areas. And in doing so, something appears. Number one, organizational health metrics, those are your finance metrics, you know, so how much money do we have until we don't have money anymore, those kind of things. That's stuff that we're doing a pretty good job collecting. We need to know that. We've got staff members in a lot of cases who are completely attributed to thinking about that organizational health metric or that set of organizational health metrics. It gets a little bit foggier when we go to program health metrics. Some programs are collecting some metrics. Some are being driven by foundations. Some are being driven by a, a, a need to be able to assess. However, we're not all doing this. What we're all driving towards is this third category of mission success metrics. These are the things that say, what is our social impact? How well are we doing to end world hunger? These are the things that are essential for us, but they are so hard to suss out. And perhaps we should put that green box, that mission success, success metrics, on top of the other two. Because in order to effectively evaluate how, what kind of good we're doing in the world, we need to know, are our programs being effective? And how's our organization doing? Are people giving us money because theoretically they support what we're doing? Those kind of questions. So when we're thinking about organizational health metrics, these are things like your financial, you know, actual versus budget, the number of people on your mailing list, how many people are actually opening your emails. These are things that are really, you know, are, are we okay? We take our temperature and we find out, yes, we've got enough money for the next year. No, we don't. We're in some kind of crisis. It's those kind of metrics that tell you, are you going to survive? Are you going to thrive next year? What does the bottom line look like? For the corporate sector, in a lot of cases, this, as, as they mentioned before, this is pretty much what they're talking about. It's all surrounded around that. As nonprofits, we have a little bit more that we need to start to look at in a real, true, critical way. So program health metrics, how many volunteer hours have been given over the course of the year? How many people have you served? What's the cost to provide a unit of service? What are these metrics that are really, truly going to tell you, all right, these are the outcomes of my project, of my program. These are the numbers. These are the calculated things. Are your programs going the way that you hoped they would? Yes, I think actually we mean. So we're, we're so sorry, if I'm using the wrong terminology or, or you know, kind of looking at this in a, in a in different kinds of ways. So if we're, if we're calculating our program health metrics, what we really need to think about are these real, true, kind of hardcore numbers. And so, you know, if we want to know how many people are doing different things, and these are just examples, and they can expand from there. When we start to think about, um, uh, you know, some of these beyond type of metrics, we're really, you know, so the metrics that are thinking about, uh, you know, are we starting to make that impact? Is this program actually working? We're going to look at mission success metrics. Mission success metrics are both going to evaluate your program's health as well as your organization's health because I would argue that the way that your programs are working is very closely tied to the way that your organization is seeing success overall. 
So those start to meld together. What I want you to think about if we're looking at the program health metrics are the numbers, the numbers that are going to calculate for you, all right, so what did we do this year? What did we do next year? What do we need to do the year after to see that kind of growth? And what are those specific benchmarks? And from those numbers, we can start to extrapolate and build upon and use information around mission success metrics. So, you know, what is the boost in grades in school? What is the uh, increase in overall health for an individual or for individuals in our program compared to potentially individuals not using our program? Are people in our program getting access to services that are uh, theirs by right more than people who are not necessarily taking up uh, activities within our program? And so using these all together is going to give you this overall concept of mission success. But where do you find this data? So a lot of this data, we know where we find it. So we're looking at it already. We're looking at our information on our communications. We're looking at our website metrics. We're looking at our email metrics. We're looking at financial data that we're collecting and tracking on a regular basis. We're looking at potentially constituent data that we're gathering, uh, from, you know, gathering from a variety of different places and putting into our constituent management system. How many volunteers did we have? How many people donated in the last year? And what's the increase or what's the decrease? We're thinking about what data could you actually collect that you may not be collecting. Is there survey data? Can you ask specific questions and reach out to people to try and fill some holes in the knowledge that you may have? Is there information about staff or participants that might be very helpful for you that you're not gathering? Information that you can, again, go ahead and fill some gaps, assess the community overall. Can you start to look at, and this will be on the second slide, or the next slide, but can you start to look at wide information about your constituent base that may not necessarily be generated by you, but can you access that information? Is there data from the field that you're not taking that you could be taking? And then what external data can you access? Is there public information from your seat or your county? Is there information from partner organizations that might be very helpful for you? Thinking critically about that step in our research is something that we're finding only the most successful organizations in program evaluation are doing on a regular basis. So yes, every once in a while, some organizations are going out and they're gathering data on how their students are doing in school as well as doing in their program. But the organizations consistently that we've talked to who are seeing the most success here are gathering a lot of this outside information and using it in interesting ways. So we've got lots of different things that we can collect, and I want to apologize to the people at home uh, or at their office watching this as well, but we're going to sit down and do a bit of an activity uh, here at the center. Um, and if you are watching from your office, I definitely encourage you to go ahead and uh, try and do this activity by yourself instead of with a small group. So what we're going to do, we're going to take um, a good 15 or 20 minutes to do, maybe even a little bit more than that, uh, is you've all got a piece of paper uh, on your table and give me a second and run over here and what you guys are going to do is take a little bit of time and create your magical dashboard so what are the pieces of data the metrics the measurements that you would like to be collecting in order to assess one of these areas. And I'll give you guys the choice at your table to pick. So here we've got an example from organizational health. You can pick programmatic health. You can pick mission success. Work together to develop a dashboard that would be fairly, so metrics that would be fairly consistent across organizations, in which case uh, mission health might be a little bit difficult for you to do at a group unless you happen to be coming from a similar uh, background for your organizations. You want to think about, all right, so what are the things that are really uh, powerful? What are the things I would really love to know? And come up with this magical dashboard. We're going to use that again at the end of our session to figure out, all right, so how in the world do we get started? All right, so you've got paper on your table. You've got markers on your table. We have some more markers as well. 
Uh, try and have at least a few people sitting down with you so you can talk this through. Um, but what I want you to do is work together, try and figure out, so what are the things that are really helpful and universal uh, for our organizations to gather that's gonna give us some real insight as to how we're doing, either based on, again, organizational health, programmatic health, or mission success. Yes? Can you give us like type of organizations that you're looking at? Um, so I would posit that for some of these, especially if you're focusing on organizational health or programmatic health, um, that you uh, want to try and come up with things that will be fairly universal. If you've got a bunch of different people um, and you're having trouble coming to terms with that, feel free to add a number of different metrics and, and make a note that for our organization that would be helpful. I think that uh, it's probably more practical for all of you to come up with stuff that, for your own organizations or for if you're uh, uh, not working with a specific organization, an organization uh, at the table of the other individuals around you. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna run around the, the room and um, check in with you guys. If you're doing this back at your office, uh, you know, take time and think about it for your own organization.
welcome back, everybody, and, and welcome back to the people on the live stream. Um, I hope that that was helpful to kind of start thinking about what the potential is out there for measurement and all the information that you might potentially want to collect in one of these different areas, or I know some of you created multiple different areas. I think that uh, I learned a few important things or had a, some really valuable discussions going throughout this conversation. And we'll take that information from a lot of you and hopefully we'll be able to have some of you share about um, some of these realizations about, all right, so this is a whole lot. <laughs> and there's lots of information. There's kind of infinite things that you could want to know. That's the reality. It, how do you get from here to there? How do you take this gigantic set of things and actually do something with it? Figure out how to collect it. Figure out what to do with it. Because it can be daunting. You know, we looked when uh, Sean and Rem were talking, we looked at this amazing process of, you know, everybody on the bottom level are collecting really consistent data and then they're feeding that back up to the organizations and that's all consistent throughout the other you know, groups and they're looking at outcomes, they're looking at the social impact and then it goes up and, I mean, we could do so much. I look at that and I go, oh my gosh, you know, I work with six other people and we all have like 60 hours worth of work to do. How are we gonna fit this in? How are we gonna make this transition? to saying data, well, I got 60 hours worth of work and data is 61 and 62, right? To, all right, I've got 60 hours worth of work, I'd really prefer to do 40. Out of my 40 hours of work, data is number 10 and 11. So how do we make that shift and say, this is a priority, this is something we wanna do? One of the things I would say to you is, actually start doing it instead of living in complete fear okay data is scary sort of not really data is just another piece of collecting information and working it into your general process of what you do every day and if we can take it from this big scary beast inside of your computer or outside of your computer, and we can turn it into something that's just simply part of a regular process, we're in much better shape. So how do we do that? We start small. We don't come in and say, and this is from the group up here in the front, we had a great conversation about well, you're talking, you know, we could be thinking about these really vast things. How in the world do we take this vast and make it approachable? I mean, really and truly, if you were doing this right, you would have your theory of change and you would take your theory of change and you would use that to specifically create the measurements and you would take those measurements and you would always make sure that they report back. Well, that's very, very strategic and amazing if you have the time and ability to create an evaluation plan. However, the reality is you know, in our six-person organization, even in our 30-person organization, and especially in our one- or two-person organization, that is not always possible. So what do we do? Do we throw up our hands and we say, well, oh well, guess we're not gonna do that one, we'll throw that one out the door. No, instead, we need to take small steps and we need to try and look at this tactically instead of strategically. Right now, not to say you're off the hook for strategic, but let's, because you're not, you're not. <laughs> Instead, let's look at this tactically. What are the small things that I can do to get this process started? What are the essential things that I could gather that I can use right now, today, this instant? And in starting small, in starting that process, you can get used to the tactical piece. Then you can circle back around when you're ready when you have the ability, when you have the funding, when you have the time to do that strategic piece. So how do we start assuming that we're gonna go tactical? Well, we need to find what I affectionately think about as that sweet spot, that intersection between what do you want to know, so all these things that you've just put on your magical dashboard, and what can you easily, and we can replace that word with reasonably, collect, because some of these things, especially if you went the mission success route, I mean, you need a full-time staff member to collect some of that data. And you need historic data to be able to collect that, to be able to analyze it and do anything with it. So how do we find that intersection? 
that's where we need to go. That is going to allow us to get started, to make those baby steps, to get going, so that then we can learn how to do it. We can feel more comfortable and confident, and then we can get to that strategic piece. Because again, you're not the off the hook. You have to do that too. But you don't have to do it right now, and that doesn't mean that you can't do anything. So the reality here is that mission success data is really hard to track in a lot of cases. There are certainly pieces here that you are collecting, and you're collecting it already, and some of them will be fairly reasonable to collect. However, the program health metrics and the organizational health metrics, they're right at your fingertips to a much greater degree. And why do I say that with confidence? Because in all of the research that we've been doing, we're finding that that in reality is what people are collecting. And I think some of that is because people don't know how to collect the other information. But some of that is also because that's what we can grab at quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what we can grab at and do something with. So when you're starting, think about starting with these health metrics. And if you want to think about it in a really practical way, we talked about over here in the, the far group in the back that uh, we're really looking at health metrics as kind of these outcomes, the, the very specific things that are happening. Oh, we ran this program and 65 people came. So these specific measurements. When we are getting to mission success, so success versus health, the success it's harder to look at. These are much more the, uh, so outputs for the first for health and outcomes for the second, and it's much harder. We wanna move from outputs to outcomes, right? We wanna move from those activities to the outcomes and the impact. But if we start in one place, it's much easier for us to start in that health area and then move towards that success. So where do we start? Well, you wanna ask yourself, I guess it's five, questions. Number one, what is going to be the most useful? What a waste of time would it be to collect data if you're not actually going to find it useful? Okay, so think about what is the most useful. Next, what is easily collectible or reasonably collectible? What are the things that you can go out that is useful that you can say, huh, I can actually get that? I understand where to find that, or I understand who to ask to find that information. Next, what is connected with the stuff that you're already doing? Because again, that goes back to useful. If you are starting to collect stuff for something that is you know, out in the future that you hope to be doing, that can certainly be advantageous, but you're not gonna be able to use it right now. So what can you collect that you're already doing? And again, what we use right now. What, sitting in the meeting that you're gonna have tomorrow, will you actually put into play? Will it have some kind of impact on the decisions that you're making at that meeting? The, the program that occurs the following week as a result of that meeting? What are you actually going to be able to implement? And then this last one is one that we often forget I mean, this all makes sense right here. This, these four, we're gonna collect stuff that we actually wanna use and stuff that we can see and gather. But what we often forget is this concept that we need to collect something that is actually sensitive to change, especially in the beginning. Now, you may not know that. <laughs> you may think something is sensitive to change and when you start to actually measure it, you find it is not. However, what you wanna try to do is find something that is actually going to be impacted by the results that you are impacted by the activities that you are doing. Because if you don't get that piece of information and every single meeting you go, well, we're still at 55. All right, well, we're, we're at 56 now. Well, we're back to 55 and now we're back to 56. You know, that's not very helpful. We're not gonna be able to do anything with that. But if we're looking at something that is going to be sensitive to change, something that has a, a very fine level of impact that we'll see move up and down and we, we feel like we can actually use that information, use it. Why? Because we need something that's gonna help us feel like we are having success and that what we are doing is actually useful. Because 
again, you know, if we start doing this, and even if the really, really important metric is there, if we want to collect it, if we're not collecting any data that's actually going to make any movements on the needle, honestly, I'm not going to keep that up. I'm going to say, all right, well, I've collected this for four weeks, and it seems to be pretty flatline and consistent. Good, I'm done. I clearly don't need to measure anymore. And that's not the point. We want to do this as practice so that we can move on to that more strategic level. So you want to ask what we call actionable questions, questions that are going to help you make decisions, gather information. You know, we could use measurement for therapy. You know, look at all these fans. They love me. This is fantastic. And a lot of us do. I certainly, I know Deborah's going to talk later about social media ROI. Uh, you know, that is just rampant. Look at this. We got six more fans today. I'm so excited. I mean, great. Good. Pat on the back. OK, let's move on. Let's move on to our next level, which would be measurement for exploration. Huh, look at that. There's those spikes. I wonder why. Well, let's, let's look and figure out why. OK, so you figure out why. Great, check, done. But that's not actually putting it into practice, which would be more measurement for action. So how can we replicate this? How can we make this happen more? This is something we want to see. What can we do to make that happen? And this is a really, really simple concept. And if you can, in your brain, go measurement for action, measurement for action. What is the question I'm actually asking? You're going to move in that direction instead of, oh, let's, you know, it's, it's 3 o'clock on a Friday. I'm kind of bored. Let's go look at some data. <laughs> I mean, that's not going to really help us move forward. We need to be doing things that help us move forward. Instead of volume, purpose. And you need to remember that this needs to be connected to your goals. So even if you are not doing the whole strategic mess of, you know, theory of change and everything's connected and we're, you know, this is this grand evaluation plan, even if you're not doing that, and again, I give you permission to not do that right up front, you do want to think about some goals and take your measurements and effectively connect that to your goals. And they can be specific goals. They don't have to be end world hunger. But get membership numbers to uh, support another employee. Bring on you know, members to do something new, something that is calculable, something that is manageable, something that you can do, something that you can see success with. But again, it all needs to be tied back to something that you want to do and that you can see connecting to your mission. So. We're going to jump back to our projects here in a second, which is, where's your intersection? So what lies in the middle for you? You need to figure out what's there. And it's this concept of you know, making a single snowball, finding those very few sets of measurements, whether it's five things or 10 things you're doing on a regular basis to measure, and you're bringing those to a meeting of your directors, or you're bringing that to a staff meeting, and you're looking at that on a regular basis, Whatever it might be, do some small thing, something that feels manageable for your organization. And that small thing can help lead you to this concept of the avalanche, you know, that real strategic measurement. All right, so I want to stop here and get uh, just kind of some questions from the room, but I'd also like you to share. So from your, uh, so we probably have about you know, five minutes left or so. <laughs> so from your um, magic dashboards, what, what is your intersection? What are the one or two things that you think are the most effective for you that you're going to bring back? All right, so we can intersperse that with questions, because I know you probably have questions as well. But um, you know, that's what I'd really like to hear. What are the things you're going to pull back? And I'll leave us on an inspirational quote while we talk. Any thoughts? Yes. And we'll for, uh, the thing that I, hold on, I think we need the microphone done. <laughs> so I think for us, the thing that we could be doing a better job on measuring is um, we're a volunteer organization that places tutors in the Cambridge Public Schools and mentors that we could be measuring in the increase in student grades and or test scores between you know some period of time, say they come in in October versus in June. Uh, and I think that we 
do that more sporadically and periodically, the way they talked about doing punctuated evaluations, but we haven't done it on a dynamic, mm -hmm. ongoing basis, and I think that that is doable for us. But I also just wanted to make an observation that I think another question about where do you start that people should be asking themselves are around, is around um, how your values of your organization are gonna be expressed through what you're measuring. And for example, on the, um, the suggestion that you had about social impact, one of the things that, and I actually measured this at a former nonprofit, how many people were no longer reliant on social benefits. That has an implicit value judgment in it about what mm -hmm. your expectation is of people. And I would just suggest that you think about that consciously. Um, for example, I know from research that I've read on poverty and social policy, the most effective anti-poverty program in, in this country has been Social Security, and nobody gets off of it. Right. And there's no expectation that you're moving off of it. It moved the most people out of poverty of any of the war on poverty or New Deal programs, and it is actually very successful when you compare it against other Western democracies and what they've done. So it's a very, very effective program, but it doesn't meet that benchmark, and so what do we care about, and what, um, what do we want to see happen? Mm -hmm. so. I think you make a really valid point um, that, you know, along with those goals, so when you're starting to think about what are your measures associated with your goals, you do want to think about what does that say about your organization. I, I do push back a little bit and think that um, on the individual measures, it is worth some time and thought and potentially some conversation uh, in this tactical stage, but not massive so. That for me, those kind of conversations to a certain extent are going to be the more strategic conversations that we're going to have at that next step. That, that I would hate for an organization to not measure something like that in which they may or may not gain information from and it may or may not be uh, a, a super helpful metric. But if they're not looking at it at all, then they haven't, because they haven't had the time to have the, the values conversation around it or they're conflicted about the values conversation around it, that I worry that we would it hit another brick wall that, that what I hope for all of you to be able to do is to kind of take down as many of those barriers as possible and then erect uh, supports for what you're doing and reasoning for why you're doing it after you, well, so not totally after you've started to do it, but you know, in that process and be able to uh, be a little bit more nimble. But I, it's, it's certainly valuable. Thank you. Going through this process just reminded me that um, oftentimes we have an organization, we think it's a great idea, we start doing activities, and then later we come and we measure things. But it's such a, an informative, iterative process to look at uh, what we want our final metrics to look like because it makes you go back and say, what's the most useful information? Like, what, what's interesting? What are we, like, what do we want to know about? And then that informs your activities. So mm -hmm. then when you're measuring your activities, you're, you, you, you look at what is important in your activities that you want to put in your dashboard. And so it maybe helps clarify what the organizational activities should even be. So it's not a one directional flow process. It really um, helps inform what you're actually implementing. Absolutely, it's, it's a cycle of measurement that I think is really important for us to think about. That we measure things not to just simply get to an endpoint, but we measure them to be able to ask smarter questions next time and then continue to evaluate as we go along um, and that it, it makes us stronger organizations. I don't know that we actually have any more time, so. Okay. <laughs> Great, so one more question, anyone? or no questions. Um, I, I do wanna say thank you, everyone. Um, so this research is still going on. If you at your organization, and I'm also speaking to you out in the internet world, um, have a case study that you think is uh, reasonable for us to look at, you do not have to be doing this perfectly. You do not have to be the exemplary organization of the Harlem Children's Zone to be interviewed by us, to be part of this process. But if you think that you are doing evaluation and you're running into challenges, anything like that, please get in touch with us. Uh, you can email us. Uh, Elizabeth Pope is directing that project. Um, so she's sitting right here in the back of the classroom. Um, as well as if you're online, it's just elizabeth at idealware.org. So please email us to get uh, involved in the case study process. All right, thanks so much, everyone.